Hey, Henry. Um, so uh, I was looking at some of like the, the stats from, from Saturday, and it seems like the offensive line played pretty solid in front of you. Um, like one of their better games in the last few weeks. Uh, what did you see from them uh, against Virginia on Saturday? Uh, those big guys, they were, they were moving. Like they were, the, the uh, power was going for you know, and that's a good thing to see with those big boys because it's, it's, it get down, it get dirty down there in the trenches, you know, and it's not easy pushing guys back, you know. And I feel like those guys did an amazing job, and I just found my way through it and then surged through it. Go to Daryl Streeter from Footballville, Daryl. I hear you, man. This is your first Florida State versus Miami rivalry game. The city gonna be lit. The family can come out and watch it, though. Tell us, man, how you excited? How you feel about the game? Yeah. I'm really excited, you know. Uh, you know, it's it's a hate towards FSU, and then you know, I'm with it, I'm with everything that comes with it. So I just feel like uh I'm fully prepared for it and just taking it day by day. Go to Matt Shodell from Kane Sport, Matt. Yeah. Hey, Henry. Uh, so I was curious, obviously you had a, a, a big workload that the 24 carries for 113 yards. Do you prefer that? Do you feel like you get in more of a rhythm when you play a lot? Do you sort of like being rested? Like how do you sort of approach, um, you know, early in the year, it was obviously a two headed, even a three headed attack. Now it's a one headed attack. So how do you, how do you view that personally? Oh, uh, it don't matter to me too. Be honest. Uh, whenever my numbers call, you know, uh, I'm gonna do what I gotta do to uh, keep the chain moving and, Keep the offense on the field, you know, uh, make plays, fly around, and and hopefully uh, score touchdowns. Go to Marcus Benjamin from Canes County. Marcus? What's going on, Henry? Uh, I wanted to – I actually wanted you to walk us through your relationship with Kevin Smith and just kind of how that relationship – has, you know, kind of grown in this time of you being at Ole Miss and being here at Miami and just, just what have you learned from him uh, during the season? Uh, he taught me how to be a pro, you know, take care of my body, watch film, you know. Coach Smith was really actually my first offer. Uh, I remember he was at FAU and like ever since then, we like, we always had that bond, you know, since I was a freshman and like I could come to him and we could talk about any, anything besides football. And that's that's the true definition of a, a mentor and and a, and a leader in my eyes. And I just feel like our relationship is growing more and more. And I get comfortable uh, talking talking about uh, uh, certain stuff with him. Go to Luke Cheney from All Hurricanes, Luke. Hey Henry. So you know, I'm just curious what Lucia Stanley brings to you know the running back room, and I guess how would you evaluate you know his performance up to this point? You know, he bring that physicality, you know, uh, he's a downhill runner, you know, he makes guys miss him. He know how to get an open field and and just be special. You, you know, uh, a lot of bats don't get an open field and they, they don't have a plan. Lucius, uh, he has a plan. Uh, he's a hard runner and and I'm excited for him. Go to Manny Navarro from The Athletic. Hey Henry, uh, you obviously had a had a pretty big workload uh, against Virginia Tech. Just curious, you know how your body feels, and then also, you know, does does the coaching staff at all, you know, give you maybe an extra day to rest your body and all that, so that that you stay fresh for uh, for game day? Yeah, they they, they get us right. You know, uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays are work days, are low days, so they they give us uh, plenty of time to uh, get our body right. You know, it's just on us to be a pro. You know, uh, to go in the training room and. Then, do what you have to do because nobody cares how you feel. The next team don't care. So you just got to come out every week and, and work hard. Got time for two more for Henry. We'll go to Frank Tucker, then back to Adam to wrap it up. Frank? Henry, as a hometown kid who had back-to-back 2,000-yard -back seasons, it looks like you're on pace to run for 1,000 yards this season. That would be the first 1,000-yard season for Miami since 2016. How important is that for you? Uh, it don't really matter to me, you know. Uh, I know what I bring to the table, and and I just I just work, you know. Uh, my uh, my work speaks for itself. I'm a hard worker, and I just love to compete, you know. And and then show at the end of the season. All right, last question for Henry comes from Adam Lichtenstein of the Sun Sentinel. Hey again, um, I was just wondering, did you ever play against uh, Leonard Taylor when you guys were in high school? Yeah. What What was that like? Oh, uh, it was pretty bad, you know. It was a, it was a blowout, you know. Uh, I, I can say we really we pretty much ran the whole Miami, uh, Christopher Columbus, you know. 
it was a hard, disciplined team. Uh, but that was the, really the main focus, like discipline in high school. But it was it was pretty big in high school, you know. And then we just completely tortured them. So, <laughs> and when when you uh, go against them in practice now, uh, I know you guys may not be you know full tackling or anything, but you know as a running back, you see him maybe he gets through the line. What's it like seeing a guy like that kind of bust the rule and make plays? Just move out the way and don't let him grab you because you know LT is a big guy, strong dude. You can't let him uh, put his hands on you, or else it's over with for you. So you know you just gotta. Uh, move around in the box, quick feet, you know. But when he get his hands on you, it's over with. Hey, Will. So, Khalil Brantley played a huge role on Saturday in the run game. Uh, I'm just curious, you know, what he brings to the tight end room on a day-to-day basis. Yeah, uh, you know, he brings a, a number of skill sets. Uh, you know, he's physical. Uh, physical in that run game. And, you know, obviously, once we get him more, like – in there, he's a threat in the past game as well. And it's really cool to see him come along. And especially last weekend, I mean, he's just been busting his tail, you know, sticking to the the, the process and he got his opportunity and he made the most of it and, and really, really helped us. So that was that was really cool to see and uh, just really happy for him and, and, and happy to see him keep progressing because I know he's a special player. So it'll be great to see more of him. Go to Adam Lichtenstein and the Sun Sentinel. Hey, Will. Um, so, yeah, I guess uh, kind of a, Two part question. Uh, first part, you know, this is your last time playing in the FSU Miami game. Um, what have been some of your favorite memories of the games? And what have you seen? And then in general, also, what have you seen from um, this year's FSU defense in like film and stuff? Yeah, uh, you know, looking at the film of FSU, I mean, you know, they're, they're always going to be talented in their defense, you know, is, 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 is that, you know, they've got big, big athletic guys in the line. Uh, linebackers are playing well. They've got, you got good uh, people in the secondary as well. So, you know, it's something that you'll see every year from them and you expect that. Uh, I say it every single week, you expect the best from uh, who we're playing. And certainly this week, that's what you're going to expect from them. You know, they're coming in home. Uh, to our home, and, uh, you know, they're ready to go just like we are. So I'm expecting nothing but the best from them. They're a talented defense, so we got to prepare accordingly. Um, just looking back at memories, um, obviously being undefeated against them until, unfortunately, last year, that was always great. That was always really fun. Um, no, I think uh, I, I didn't really have any big – necessarily big roles, I guess, in my first couple years there, my freshman, sophomore year. But, you know, I think just my freshman year, first first experience of it and getting to, uh, you know, be a part of that and have Brevin, you know, score like the game ahead winning uh, touchdown was, you know, it's something that it's always sticks to me just because, you know, we were in there together and that was just such a special moment for him uh, and for us just, you know, that was, that was really cool. So. Um, but always getting a W against them it, it is something that, you know, you'll always remember. Go to Susan Miller, Degna, the Miami Herald. Hi, Will. I think last year, didn't you have the go ahead um, touchdown to make it 21 20? I think you did. That was a pretty good moment, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was too, but we, unfortunately, it just couldn't yeah. didn't finish. I know. I, I My question is, um, uh, how how is TBD doing? Um, Coach Cristobal said that he's practicing, he's preparing him to play. He said, how is he doing? And I first him and then Jake, the same thing. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good to see him getting back out there and, you know, progressing and, and looking good. So, um, you know, it's always, always good to have them out there and, and, and doing well, which is, is good to see, especially because that was a scary, scary moment a couple of weeks ago. But uh, but yeah, and having both, you know, we, we've got a talented group, like I've said, you know, that's a good problem we have is that we've got a talented quarterback room. Um, so all three of them, you know, working, uh, it, it's good to see. But, you know, uh, whoever's out there on Saturday, we've got nothing but the full confidence in them and we're going to roll with it. So, um, but it's, it's good, good having Tyler out there, just seeing him, you know, back out there feeling good. Thank you. Go to Daryl Streeter from Footballville. Um, Mallory, you being one of the leaders on your team, uh, what were some of your conversations with Jake on Saturday and, and have you had any conversations with him this week to encourage him? Yeah, I, I think last week it was just, you know, just, I just wanted to let him know the confidence that I had in him. I think that's the most important thing, you know, as, as a young player, as a young quarterback, is just knowing that people believe in you. And I wanted to let him know that I certainly believe in him and just, hey, do your thing, man. We know exactly who, what you are and who you are and just keep encouraging. And um, and I thought that I felt that a lot up there, you know, in the game, obviously, 
it was kind of a slow, slow day on offense, but it, we stuck to the course and, and finished in the end and credit to the defense for keeping us in there. But uh, I think it's just, um, you know, just, just instilling that, Hey, I believe in you, bro. We believe in you. Uh, let's do it. So um, yeah, and just keep that going. That, that, that's the thing. Cause I, I believe in him and, and everyone does uh, whoever's playing. So. Hey LT, congrats on, uh, on the weekly award. Um, Mario, Coach Cristobal and Coach Steele mentioned yesterday that like a couple weeks ago, uh, I guess you talked to them and kind of like after that you stepped up your game, you know, in terms of like, you know, your your nutrition, your workouts and things like that. Um, just what was that conversation like for you? What were some of the things that you felt you needed to to get better at? I mean, like, all right, so I had a meeting with him, him and my moms and all the coaches. We had a meeting, and then he broke down my film and basically told me what I needed to improve with and how to improve it. And then I had a game of, I had a game of weight back first, and then basically he was telling me I had to grow up, I had to step up a little bit. And then after that, I just been – I listened to what he said. I took it to, to – took it to heart, took it with me, and then ever since then, I've just been going hard with everything. Everything I do, and uh, you know exact. Do you know when that uh, meeting was, and how did that kind of? I mean, hearing from your coach, hey, you need to kind of take that step, kind of mature a bit. Like, how did that make you feel? Uh, when he, when we had the meeting, it, it basically it opened my eyes and showed me like, like I can't get in the with the stuff I was doing before. And then Coach Chris Ball basically told me like, if I if I want to make it to the league, I gotta work harder. I gotta. I got to go harder in practice. I got to grind in the classroom and all that. So really him telling me that in front of my mom, too, like she basically gave me her side talk on it and hearing from that from both of them basically woke me up. And then I just been getting back on the right track ever since. And sorry, do you remember uh, when that meeting was? No, I don't remember the exact date. We'll go to Susan Miller Degner in the Miami Herald. Susan? Hi, Leonard. How you doing? Um, hey. That's great about the meeting. Um, what I'm just wondering: Have you lost weight, gained weight? How, like, how much weight have you lost? What do you weigh now compared to last year? And I wanted to ask you something about your conditioning. Too. Um, I weigh 280 now. I was like 270 something before, and I had to gain a couple pounds back, so I ain't getting pushed around on them double teams like that. Okay, that was 270. You're saying last season? Yeah. Okay, and then what I wanted to ask you is. Because Coach Chris Walt was talking about your nu nutrition and your eating habits. What did you cut out of your diet and what are you eating now instead? And how has it made a difference while you're playing? Um, I cut out like basically all the junk food, really, like all the stuff that like the candy and chips and all that. I'm, I'm back on like the protein shades, drinking all the milks, eating a lot of like rice and chicken and stuff like that just to gain weight. So, so when you're last thing, what, so like, for example, last week in those overtime periods, right. And the goal line stands, do you, do you feel a difference in your energy since you've changed your eating? What kind of difference did you feel? Let's say at the end when it was intense. I mean, my, well, like my strength coach, like basically after halftime, we have like, we have our little snacks and our strength coach screams all the time. What you put in your body is how you're going to play finish the last of the games to I just eat like a lot of like gummies, gummy snacks. So I eat some Rice Krispies and fill up on Gatorade, and then I'll just treat me well and then go out there and play. Go to Matt Shodell of Kane Sport, Matt. Hey, Leonard. Um, so I guess this is a, a two part question, is what I guess you'd refer to it as. Uh, first part would be Is there an area of your game? you're still working to improve. And secondly, if you could talk about Florida State a little bit and what this game means to you. Um, in my game, yeah, I feel like I can improve a lot more, like my taking off, coming off the ball a little bit better, like using my hands more. And with this game going into Florida State, I mean, they're a good team. Their quarterback's good. We played against them last year. It didn't go so well, but they still, I mean, this year we're just going to play ball and go for Go for it. Hopefully, we can get the dog. Anything else for LT? We'll go back to Adam Lichtenstein to wrap it up. Hey again, so yeah, looking back at the uh, Virginia game on Saturday, I, obviously you uh, you had some plays where you kind of just abused the offensive line. Uh, what what did you see on you know from them, and what allowed you to be so successful on Saturday? 
I mean, coach, coach, my D line coach, Coach Joe, he used me just he he said a lot to just strike the man in front of you, and then I just basically was thinking that the whole game. If I strike him and I run my feet, I, I can get back there quicker than him. Like I can move quicker than how he was moving. Just wondering, memories of this of this uh, rivalry growing up. Did you go to you know any of the games, and and what does it mean to you playing Florida State? Um, you know, due to the situations I had when I grew up, I never uh, was able to catch a game in person, but I always tuned in on TV. My family is a uh, big Miami, big Miami fans. And, you know, um, you know, once this game come on, you know, everybody, you know, comes over as a holiday, you know, and, and celebrate it and just watch the game. But uh, it means a lot to me to be a part of this tradition that's been going on for so long. And just to uh, just to have the opportunity to go in and be able to uh, show the world what I got in a game like this. Also, Jordan Jordan Travis, uh, can you talk about him a little bit? Um, he could run too. He ran for 108 yards against North Carolina State. What kind of challenge does he present? Um, he, he's he's a great player, a great quarterback. Um, you know, he made some strides from last year. Um, just like you said earlier, he can um, hurt you with your legs if you if you aren't um, you know uh, closing the pocket and not giving him the opportunity. But he's just a great great quarterback. He made a lot of uh, great decisions this year, and he's been distributing the ball great. And he also been moving the offense with his legs. So he just have uh, he just had an all around good year so far. Thank you. Go to Manny hey, hey. Navarro. Okay, Susan, we'll okay. come back to you. We'll go to, okay, go to Manny Navarro of the Athletic. Hey, Tyreek. I, I apologize. This question isn't necessarily about Florida State. Writing something about Drake May, North Carolina's back. You guys have obviously a lot of good ones. Just, just curious about Drake and, and what makes him so unique. Can, can, you, can you repeat that one more time? It was going in and out of my hands. He's, he's asking about Drake May from North Carolina, Tyreek. Oh, um, no, he was. He's, he's, I, I honestly did. Um, I honestly think he don't play like a freshman, but he's definitely a good quarterback. Uh, make a lot of great decisions, and uh, he just showed. He just showed why he's uh he's a leader for that team. Basically, when we played us, you know, he made a uh, he made a lot of good decisions with the ball in his hand, and him being able to move the pocket and get out the pocket and create a lot of good situations for his guys just just shows why he's a um, leader for for his team. And then I guess just as a quick follow up, just about Jordan Travis, you know, and, and, and are there any similarities between him and Drake? They're, they're two of the best passers in the conference. Um, same thing really for them both. They are uh, the offense revolves around them and they know what they're doing well and they know and they know the guys and they know their guys. So they just um they use they, they use what they use and they know how to move the ball. They both can um, you know, extend plays with their legs and they both know how to get the ball to the guys that they want. Go to Adam Lichtenstein of the Sun Sentinel, Adam. Hey, Tyreek. I um, just want to say first, you know, uh, the play you made in overtime against UVA last week, awesome play. I thought that was a touchdown until <laughs> right at first, but um, that's not my, my question. My question's um, just, you know, you've, you've been a part of several big rivalries, you know, Florida, Georgia, Auburn, Georgia, now Miami, FSU. Um, how does this rivalry kind of compare to some of the others that you've been a part of? Um, I, I, I pretty much, uh, I pretty much think they're all the same, you know, coming into this game, you know, the, uh, history of the game and you know what this game means to some people and you know what this game means to you. So I feel like they all the same, but you just, just with this game and just like any other game, you got to prepare, you got to come in, you got to do the extra, especially for a game like this, you want to go out there and be the uh, most well-prepared team and the most well-prepared individual. Go to Daryl Streeter from Footballville, Daryl. Um, so Tariq, I think you guys are supposed to be wearing your new midnight uniforms. Um. Uh, does it matter, like, what do you wear? Does it make you feel any different? Oh, I didn't, I didn't know anything about the midnight uniforms. Uh, I too much don't pay attention to that. I just show up at, uh, I just show up and just uh, honestly just want to show up. But no, it, it's to me, and I feel like to this team, honestly, don't matter what we wear. You know, we want to go out there and be the best team. We want to be the well, the most well-prepared team. We want to dominate at every aspect of the game, despite the uniform, because at the, at the end of the day, we're out there running around. And just because our uniform is a different color don't mean that nobody's going to come out there and give up, give us our prop. We got to go out there and take everything and earn everything. You got time, for, you, you got time for a few more for Tyreek. Daryl, we got to keep moving. We'll go to okay. Luke Cheney from All Hurricanes. Luke? Hey, Tyreek. So, you know, Florida State's Johnny Wilson comes in at 6'7". Uh, I'm just curious, you know, when going up against some of these taller receivers, does your technique as a cornerback change against, you know, players of that height? Uh, honestly, not because it, um, because if, if you got to change anything, I, if you don't trust yourself. So, so I feel like just the technique that I've been working with and 
me coming in extra and doing extra things to um, help my technique and, and actually um, asking my coaches to uh, give me props on my technique should just, you know, have me at the, uh, I wouldn't say best advantage, but have me more prepared than anything. So um, just coming into this game, I, I'm honestly not changing no technique. I'm um, just going to craft on what I have and just uh, keep putting money into the bank on, on my technique and just trusting in myself. Go to Frank Tucker from Canes County. Hey, Tyreek. It's been a really good couple of games for you. What's changed over the last couple of games that's kind of elevated your, your level of play? Uh, just like I was saying earlier, um, just me coming in and putting an extra work. Um, I always put an extra work, but just just um, these last few weeks, you know, I had a, a mental talk with myself and and I just know that I got to be the best player at all times. No mistakes on my end. So that means me coming in and doing extra film work, me coming in and doing extra work and me actually being in the building when I actually don't feel like being here will actually help me be a better player and help me be the leader that this team needs. Got time for two more for Tyreek. We'll go to Susan for her follow. And then we'll go back to Daryl for his. Thanks, Alex. Um, Tyreek, uh, we got Leonard Taylor today. Say a little bit. <laughs> you're smiling about him. I mean, he's been on fire lately. Yeah, um, I'm just I'm just so proud of him. You know, um, LT, LT is a guy that I watched grow up from a young boy. Um, playing with him at South Day. We actually played on the same basketball team. Um, and just and then he transferred with me to South Ridge and he um, and he played with me there. Just just having him grow up and just seeing him becoming the man that I know he is, it's just a great feeling. And I'm very proud of him as a whole. And I just want to see him get better. And um, I'm on him every day about being the best that he can be and it's showing up. And I just want him to keep uh, keep his foot on the pedal. Thank you. Last question from Daryl Streeter. Yeah, Tyree, you've had some big rundowns um, this year, uh, some great plays. What's the thought process that goes through your mind when you see a guy gets an open field and you're like, hey, I'm going to go get him? Um, not much. You know, uh, whatever it takes, just at this point, um, the team needs me, you know, um, Every time a play happens across the field, I always take a game save, a game saver, I mean a game saving angle to the uh, ball, just just in case you know stuff like that happens, and and all that comes down to it, just not um, just always being being on point and not giving up on the play, no matter no matter if you think they, uh, if you think your teammates tackling them or not. So just in my head, it's just like um, let me let me go ahead and make the play and give us another chance to go out here and prove ourselves, you know, despite this one this one play happening.